Hello friends, welcome to the channel Electro Ceramics Lab. This is another video which is a tutorial on Raman scattering data analysis involving curve fitting and deconvolution to find out peak positions and intensity for phase analysis in a sample. So, so we'll take a Raman scatterer data and we'll analysis is, we'll do an analysis using origin software and you have to have a windows installed in it to do all the things which we are going to do in this tutorial so this raman scattering data uh, the area where it is generally used is organic chemistry in organic chemistry and uh, it is mostly used in solid state chemistry as well and of course material science and engineering area as well so this is generally done to find out the phases or the kind of phases present in a material and to find out how it changes with temperature or any other treatment so here we have a so here we'll list out the requirement for the tutorial so for this tutorial you you will need an origin software in this case we have origin 9.0 and a Raman scatter data with a background correction so that is very important with the background correction because if the data is not background corrected uh, the value which you'll often will not be the actual or the right value so you have to have a background correction before you an analyze analyze the data and a computer installed with Windows 10 for us it is Windows 10 so here we have a data it is in text format this is x axis it has two columns x and y so this is the x axis represents Raman shift or wave number which has a unit in our case its unit is per centimeter and the y axis is arbitrary intensity so we just press control a and copy the data and we'll paste it in origin software so we'll directly click over there in the first column and con press control v so the, da the data is already put in origin software so we'll start from here so before analysis doing the analysis we'll normalize the y-axis because it's a arbitrary intensity so there is no need to have an absolute value of intensity we can do it's the same as doing uh, nor normalizing so we'll click over here and go to normalize we'll normalize it between 0 and 1 so here is the normalized data we select this column and go over to line so here we get a graph Raman scattered of a Raman scattered data and we'll quickly label it so It is from we'll do it from 0 to 1000 because after 1000 you see there is nothing no change in in y-axis so there is no need to take that so we'll just take between 0 to 1000 the y uh, horizontal axis and uh, since it is a normalized data so it has to be between 0 and 1 so we'll change it between 0 and 1 and now uh, the horizontal axis will have an increment of 200 just to see what are the positions of the peaks in our case so here is it again we can change the horizontal axis to it can start from 150 because there is no data before that there is no much sensible data before that so we will go up to 100 and that's it uh, since y axis is, in, is an arbitrary intensity you can delete it and uh, yeah so you can go to ticks and levels on the left hand side you can do sorry so major levels wait a minute so 
so we'll quickly form a square in which our data will be there so we will delete the right hand side and we'll uh, on the top horizontal axis we don't need anything so that's it on the bottom it is out on the left we don't need again because it is an arbitrary intensity and then we'll label the horizontal axis that is Raman shift and it has a unit of inverse centimeter in our case and the y-axis is intensity having arbitrary unit you can make it bold go up to 26 that way just it just a looks good that's it there's no other thing in that so we'll go up to this one we'll make it bigger the labels 26 let's say we'll make it bold and the axis will make it thicker up to three remember this is being done just for presentation purpose we can make the curve a bit thicker let's say two that's good I would like to change this color as well dark blue so now we'll start so in this curve you see there is no sharp peaks as you find in case of XRD patterns here there are wider peaks so here you can see there is one peak remember these smaller ones they are not the peak they're just they're just smaller peaks which you cannot consider a consider as a peak so this hole is one broad peak this is one other broad peak this is one more broad peak this you see as a peak as well and you will see whether if there is any peak here or not we'll de try to deconvolute that one so to start with we'll go to before that we have to do we have to take a data selector okay we'll go to analysis we'll go to peak and baseline and we have to do multiple peak feeds because there are more than one peaks in this curve so we have to go to multiple peak feed and click open dialog and remember it asks here for peak function for deconvolution purpose and curve fitting you need to give a safe function safe function is such as Gaussian Lorentzian or a product of it or it can be a combination of Gaussian and Lorentzian so for for you here is a case here is an example of Gaussian and Lorentzian curve uh, these these two curves are symmetrical around a line passing through the origin you can see the blue one is Lorentzian whereas the Gaussian is red one you can use any of this or a combination of these two there's no problem it depends uh, what you want to have so in our case we'll have a Lorentzian curve so we'll select in the peak function Lorentz and click on so before doing the curve fitting you have to select the data range in which you'll do the curve fitting so for that you need to notice that you should take a minimum wings these are the wings you can consider more is not required the optimum is required so I'll take up to this one where it it becomes stable and in this part we'll take up to this one because if it is more than the fitting there will be a problem in the fitting so that's it we have selected the data we'll go back again and here we'll make sure that lower engine is selected before fitting we have to select the peaks so here I see one peak I select one and let's say we'll start by selecting one another peak here 
one here that is visible this is visible this is visible and I'll choose a peak let's say here it seems like there is a peak here you have to go with your intuition here and you have to check you'll do the fitting one time and see if it is the R square value that is the goodness of fit uh, is it closer to one or not if it is not then you can come back again and remove some of the peaks or you can play with the positions and then again fit it to find out the better fitted curve so we'll start with open and fit and we'll see each iterations of fitting so here we click if you click this one then after it will proceed by one iterations at a time otherwise if you click this one then as you see it says fit until converge so we'll go with this one just to describe the method here so click once see how the peaks are being fitted and you have to mark this r square value as well so it is 0.95 which is good and we'll click one more times things are not changing much so we'll click fit until converge see it is going on the right side bottom yeah so it shows 0.99 the value of r square is 0.99 and it has taken 400 iterations it has performed to reach our this convergence we'll click done so a data will be shown a tabulation we'll look it look into these after some time before that look into this graph see this peak this is the or original curve and these colored ones are the fitted curves which was obtained after multiple peak line fitting so this is one curve corresponding to this curve this corresponds to this one this corresponds to this this yeah so this corresponds to this part and this one is this is the biggest one part so combination of yellow and pink peaks makes this peak so if you if you deconvolute this peak you will get these this will deconvolute de into two peaks so we see that that these are the curve which was obtained after fitting and we'll look into this right hand side table here there are values and error and we'll look into the peaks here so here you can see uh, each curves they have some values up here so x e is represent the y uh, horizontal x axis let's say 236 if you come up to here so this represents this peaks so the peak position of this peak is 236.11 per centimeter and its width is given here and its area of the peak is 82.79 unit and its height is given by 0.31271 so you can use this value this a represents area and this can be taken as an in area intensity as well to compare the phase fractions uh, in the material but here you see this value for peak 2 is 35.01036 means there is but if you look at the horizontal axis you don't find any value which is equal to 35 so which is wrong so we, i think we have to look back and select the peak position play with the peak position again so so we can just delete this one we just we'll just have a look how it it will change once we change our peak positions so we will go back again to analysis peak baseline multiple peak fitting open dialog select the lower engine curve have a data selection that was already there since we did the last time I'll click OK now we'll select only one peak up to here remember the last time we selected one more peaks here which gave an error in the curve fitting because the, it showed a peak at 35 percent which is not which is not here right you can see so we'll select one up to here one here one here one here and one down here We'll click open and fit again to see how the curve fitting happens 
with each iterations. So I'll click again. <coughs> and we'll click fit until conversions. In this case, you can see this peak which we had selected is not being shown. That peak was selected earlier, which looks fine in this case. And uh, the R square value is 0.98, which is quite good, it is near to 1. And now we will have a look over to the data, which is obtained after curve fitting. So here it is. The first peak is around 210, of course, the red line this is the first peak. Uh, its area is given 185. The second peak is 372, around this one. So the peak value which is being shown here, it should be logical. It shouldn't be like, it, it shouldn't be different from what you feel from this curve. So this peak uh, is around 479. There is one more peak around 629 and the other is 598. So this is at 598 and this is at 629. So these are the peaks in, our, in the curve obtained after plotting Raman scattering data and doing the an analysis of it. So here we see that we can play around with the peak positions and the, the number of peaks in our uh, curve to f better fit the data. And it, doing this, we can identify the peak by the value. We can identify the peak and find the peak position. And after doing the curve fitting, what we have to do is we know we should note down those values of peaks and compare it those values from the literature data to find out what are the phases are present in our sample. So you have to look in literature. And one more thing you can do is you can calculate the phase fraction uh, once you identify the, uh, the number of phases and type of phases present in the sample. Uh, you can calculate the phase fraction by comparing the intensity of each peaks corresponding to a particular phase. So by comparing, you can calculate the phase fraction. And then you can compare the peak intensities as a function of variation of temperature or uh, other things as well. So, so in that way, you can get to know your phase stability in your sample. So in this tutorial, we learned to do the curve fitting and deconvolution of Raman scatter data. And this we did with origin nine and doing a Lorentzian curve fitting. That's it in this tutorial. Uh, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Share it with your friends. They may need it. We'll come back with another great video for you. Till then, stay tuned to this channel. Take care.